Enjoying a dominant position on the sea, Terracina was founded by the Latin or Oscan Ausonians, then occupied by the Volscians, who called it Anxer before it came under the power of Rome in 406 BC, though it wasn't a colony of Rome until 329 BC. Rome further expanded its territory by leading the Via Appia directly to Terracina and onward to the important inland city of Capua. Hey, this is Darius for Ancient Rome Live. In this episode of Traveling Along the Via Appia, we're going to be exploring the city of Terracina. And it's an incredibly well-preserved city with a fabulous sanctuary. And the Via Appia went right through that town. So let's explore together. And of course, hit the subscribe button so you can continue to follow along the Via Appia exploration. We go all the way to Brindisi. Terracina, where the Via Appia passes through this great Republican city. And right here, announcing your arrival or departure from Terracina is this monumental arch. And look at that pavement, so well preserved. It's nothing more spectacular than walking on the Via Appia. And this is one of my favorite places. We're in the elevated forum area of the city of Terracina, a great Republican city. And of course, at the top, there's a sanctuary to Jupiter Anxor, a great Republican sanctuary. But what is the highlight for coming into Terracina today is that you have the sea down below, you have the sanctuary up on top, and you're coming out of the Pomptine Marshes to Terracina, and you're coming right here, walking on this Republican era street, and the piazza is relayed probably in the time of Augustus or Tiberius. And you're surrounded in this magnificent forum by today's Duomo, which is probably the temple of divine Augustus. Just beyond it is the Capitolium temple. To the side, there is a magnificent theater with the years further and further revealed with modern excavations and removal of modern building constructions. You have basilica structures. And then as you leave toward Fondi, or as you're coming from Fondi into Terracina, there is a magnificent quadrifrons arch. So you have so many details of Republican into early imperial architecture here preserved in this elevated, or in an artificial terrace, this elevated piazza, this grand forum of the Republican era, all attributed initially to the great Republican family, the Gens Emilia, is who is responsible for the great constructions here in Republican times, later superseded by the intervention of the imperial rulers Augustus and Tiberius. Wheeled traffic was reserved for the Viapia, and you're passing by here with your wares, with your merchandise, your soldiers heading down to Brindisi. But the wheeled traffic could not come into the piazza. In the forum, it could not come into the forum of Terracina. So you had bollards, these blockers that prohibited then the wheeled traffic, the carts from coming into the piazza where there was litigation, where there was assembly, where there was a place of gathering, but it wasn't a place that was allowed to be clogged with carts, such was the case in Pompeii, in Rome, and Terracina. Due to the mountainous terrain along the coast of Terracina, there was no coastal route for the Via Appia. Therefore, the road was forced to ascend 147 meters upward to the top of the mountain before descending again to the next town, Fondi. We can still admire the magnificent temple sanctuary at the top of this hill. Got the incredible, incredible substructures here of the sanctuary of Jupiter Anxor, as it's popularly known. And you've got this large hall underneath the sanctuary. And a real standout feature is a natural cleft in the rock that might be the place of of Oracle, a place of directly consulting the God, but you're surrounded by incredible, incredible architecture going back to the end of the second century BC. The temple sanctuary is commonly known as the Temple of Jupiter Anxor, but was probably dedicated to the goddess Feronia. It's an all important Republican site showing early use of concrete to great effect hand in hand with the spectacular natural landscape along the Mediterranean. It's also a location famous for the fighting during the Republican Social War. 
Now, the sanctuary dates between the middle of the 2nd century BC and the middle of the 1st century BC. There's one large temple surrounded by a portico on a series of terraces. There was an oracular temple. And there's a similarly small sanctuary, possibly dedicated to Venus of Sequence. Three terraces in total, lined with porticos to accommodate the pilgrims that made that long trek to come up to the sanctuary with this spectacular views and a religious experience even getting your fortune told. And as you explore, you'll even see archeologists busy at work learning more about the site. Things would drastically change for the Via Appia under the emperors. This right here, CXX, is so important. It tells us so much of the imperial history of the Via Appia. So the Via Appia in Republican times made its way through Terracina and up to the sanctuary of Jupiter, Anxor, and then the back way down to Fondi. Instead, now you could go right past Terracina on the level of the coastline, right past the port and skirt along the coast because a huge section of the mountain had been removed. How much? A height of 120 Roman feet high. So the soldiers, the engineers, the stone cutters start with removing this portion of rock at the top, 120 Roman feet high, and make their way down. And because the Romans take pride in their engineering, they marked it every 10 feet. So easily with the naked eye, we can make out C and CX and CXX. But if we have another perspective, a bird's eye view, we could see that starting point. We get a real perspective of this amazing engineering achievement. Again, under Augustus, or under Trajan, it's a new shortcut, making more efficient, more effective, the route of the Via Appia. As the stone carvers cut back the rock of the outcropping, today known as Pisco Montano, they removed around 13,000 cubic meters of stone of an area roughly 36 meters high and 300 meters deep. There's a striking similarity with the work on Trajan's column whose inscription denotes that the height of the column records the immensity of the project, which involved cutting back a portion of the Quirinal Hill. Above, there are still impressive fortifications, all but impregnable, to stop attacks on the city at the entrance, always along the Via Appia. Thanks for joining me along the Via Appia in Terracina. Tune in for more episodes as we make our way down on the Via Appia the road to Brindisi. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And of course, you can support our efforts. We're a nonprofit at ancientromelive.org.